Jehova Malak, Ola Molamat, Jehova Malak, Jami Rakis, Jehova Gadol, Makari and Tios, Jehova Erdonai, Jehova Elohim, Kurios Tios Panta Kreta, Kurios Tios Pistos, Elda et Jehova, El Emona Jehova, Ibas Leon Kurios, Otios O Panta Kreta, Basilios Basilion Kai Kurios Kurion, Jehova Dabar Halal, Elohim Dabar Halal, Jehova Elohim, Gadol Gadol Gebura, El Elohim Israel, Jesus Christos, Ton Christon Isun Ton Kurion, Kurion Numahagion Pantacreta, Gadol Gadol Gebura, Zongar Ologan Tautios, Dasmias Dulas Despotes in Jesus Christos, Kurion, 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 Hagion, 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 Kurion, Isus Christos, Gadol, Gadol, Gebura, Derek, Emunabakar, Mishvat, Shaba, The Megalogai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, a training in righteousness that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sitkeno to the highest. And peace be unto the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath. In the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry, of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. Understanding the accuracy of His plan for us. The plan wherewith we, the human beings, can go ahead and break forth all the barriers which have been hindered in your mind to think that it's not possible for you to fulfill the great commission of my Christ in making disciples of all the nations when you as an individual believer grow up as grammatias in the Lord. In order to break through such barriers, every day God the Father has given us His Word, the great and unique Word of my Christ, wherewith the thinking patterns of the world which has caused them which do not know the word of the Lord of a God. They have caused you to dig and keep the pits. And the word of the Lord of a God in Psalms 119 verse 85 teaches to us the people who do not know your Torah, the law, they have kept pits. They have digged and kept pits so that those pits are nothing to me 
I don't fear them because I have in me the great infallible and inerrant word of my Christ. So that's the viewpoint what we learned from there. The cosmic thinking of this man who think and limit the standards of this fellowship of Lord God the Holy Ghost who is going to indwell in us in making to make known or to make known to the world the importance of this great mind of Christ which is the completed canon of scripture in our hands. First of all, attack upon the pastor teachers who don't have this bona fide gift yet they come to the pulpit to teach the word. And yet, in the present Christendom, where there is no proper exposition of the word of the Lord of a God, which has to be iota upon iota, including carrera upon carrera, word by word, line by line, precept upon precept, where it has to be taught dogmatically and make known to you that these barriers, what this man has kept, they are not according to the word. So need not fear this man and make sure that you diminish not even a single word of the Lord of a God and absolutely establish the thinking of my Christ. Such a great life we have been designed in the Lord of a God. So in order to make known these things to these people, the great work of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ which has bestowed upon us is to diligently search because from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun it is the name of my Christ which we have to magnify and he said my name shall be dreadful among the heathen but in return we are making the name of my Christ by not making to clearly expound to them the fear of the Lord we are making to them the name of my Christ as a blasphemous one, as David took an occasion to the enemies of God to blaspheme because of the great work what he has done against Bathsheba by killing Uriah the Hittite or murdering Uriah the Hittite. So at every instance of our life we are giving an occasion to the enemies of God to blaspheme my Christ rather than making sure that the name of my Christ from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun, his name has to be magnified. So how can we magnify it? Until and unless you carry your cross every day and follow my Christ to learn the word of the Lord of a God, you cannot. Until and unless you come out from the pits what these people they have digged and kept who do not know the word of the Lord of a God, you cannot. So in order to know what are your pits, the pits which are nothing before in comparison to the mind of Christ, the completed can of scripture, the word of the Lord of God, you should come and learn every day the mind of Christ. That's the only rule that has been kept for us in the Bible. Because Lord our God said, I am holy, so you be holy. And we are to walk before him perfect as the Father in heaven is perfect, so we ought to be perfect. And that's not when we reach our resurrection body in the presence of God, but right now in this flesh putting to death the activities of the old sin nature as Isa thought. Anyhow I am going to die, what is the use of this birthright? So actually should be the attitude and the thought of every believer on this earth saying that after believing in Christ or believing in Christ you are dead to the world. Anyhow you are going to die. What is the point of maintaining your lusts to be fulfilled on this earth rather than fulfilling the desires of God the Father as his son who did it. In Isaiah 53 we read about him who fulfilled the desire of God the Father, the great good pleasure of God the Father. So it's a high time for us to awake and to learn and to look that we have been kept alive to fulfill the desire of that great Lord God, the Father in heaven, like Isa having an attitude to swear and to say we are dead to the world and alive to Christ. But in contrary, you are exactly following the pattern of Isa. 
rather than knowing that we shall not even diminish single iota or carira from the word of the Lord, my God. So dear brethren, the things which God the Father has prepared and kept for us on today's date in eternity past, using the privacy of our priesthood in confession of our sins through to learn the mind of Christ in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Ghost. We shall use the privacy of our priesthood in confession of our sins. And let's come back and learn the thinking of my Christ. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pale wonders of this great and unique word of my Christ in the privacy of your priesthood given to you. And after this prayer we shall continue what God the Father has prepared and kept for us on today's date in eternity past. He is mine to be revealed for us. Infinitely Divine Holy Father, once again coming unto the grace of the Lord to learn the word. What else can we ask on this earth, O Father, than to protect and to guard your word which you have given for us? Much of the people, O Lord, knowing not the importance to tremble at your presence and to carefully guard this word and to teach this truth. Much of the present Christendom is investing the time, that which is vain and vague, rather than knowing that after believing in Christ or the moment when they believe in Christ, they are dead to the world. Anyhow, they are going to die to the world. What is the worth of holding forth to the world birthright in achieving the things of this earth? But in return, O Lord, holding fast to the birthright of heavenly standards of quality more privileges wherewith you have been called us, dwelling richly in the mind of Christ, and being strengthened in the inner man through the Holy Spirit of God given to us to enlighten our eyes to understand the truth. Help us to walk in faith in the power of Lord God the Holy Ghost and reach your will to be fulfilled completely through us as your Son executed it by fulfilling this life only in the energy of Lord God the Holy Ghost from the day of his birth till the day of his ascension. So, Father, being born again in Christ, walking all the time in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, help us, Sovereign Lord, to learn the things which have been kept, preserved for us each and every day. And on this day of your spiritual manna, what you have kept, O Lord, unto us. Help us to learn it, so that, Father, we could reflect your grace and we could honor your word above your name. So as we are going to study these things, Sovereign Lord, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Ghost, would enlighten and challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we pray, Father. Amen. In Psalm 719, verse 85, we have the viewpoint of the people who are in the standards of their own thinking, called to be the human viewpoint. And the world has been combined or synchronized with the standards of human viewpoint to be the reality rather than looking upon what has to be the only reality to be from the Word of God. That's what much of the people today have failed to understand the importance of this great, unique, infallible, and inherent Word of God. Because he claims in Psalms 119, verse 85, the proud, that is, the people who are having in them the standards called to be arrogant nature, or the nature of called as insolent or presumptuous. So these people are the one who proudly boil up, arrogantly rebel. They don't want to take and consider in their mind the thinking of Christ because they see the cause and effect. They learn from the practical way of life which is far high for them in achievement, and they don't walk by faith. 
but we are called to have to walk by faith and not by sight and the things what faith can do when we believe in the lord and they say it might be a luck or a pure miracle but they don't go to believe in the standards what god can do when he said if you have a mustard seed of faith what great achievements you can do in christ though the minute thing of this corona virus what it is not visible to the eye but whereas mustard seed of faith is visible to the eye if such corona virus could do much damage to this man then how much more if you and i could possess that mustard seed of faith can do great impact in your lives to christ so we walk by faith but the world is trying to walk in the standards of its rationalism or empiricism and it's trying to impart or inculcate call to be as proud or z in the hebrew they are boilingly arrogant the reason why they could be boilingly arrogant if you would look back in the ancient hebrew pictographical representation of this word the first one is an agriculture equipment called to be like a matak which could sow the seed and the other one of this alphabet what we call for z is a door where you get every thought so they are going to use this agriculture equipment as a matak they dig in and they are in a sense to keep it to make sure that every thought what they get it has to go through this process of digging verifying and understanding and then putting into practice so this people who don't believe the word of the lord this people who don't give number one priority for the mind of christ the bible calls them to be as arrogant ones or the proud ones and what they have digged again the word for dig is called in the hebrew kara that is they have excavated they have tried to make it as a open banquet because they say they have achieved so they are trying to dig and the things what they are trying to dig the pictographical representation says that like the thinking of scribes they have their head strong belief for example you could look upon the fatigue of a material when it would break it out or fail called to be the fatigueness the failure point the same thing they want to say we have achieved all the things and we have digged now we have kept you this to be the only method where you should think so they have this scribal oriented thinking that meant to say what we have achieved is correct what we have done is right and they have that to be in their mind and all the time they have constantly that in their mind so they are going to dig and keep for example about this human body they have a lot many reasons to dig and keep about certain age you will have this about certain age you will have that but when the bible says in the case of caleb though is 85 he has in him the vigor of 40 because he completely followed the lord of a god with all of his spirit we fail in completely following the lord of a god with all of your spirit and you go to now claim the digged and kept pits of this arrogant man and you call this to be the standards of limits so this people what they have thought and kept for you they make themselves to be the scribes they make themselves to have such kind of a authority so dear brethren 
They give it to you as a pasture to be fed. And they're going to furniture you further to have relaxed over there and say, this is the limit. And you cannot go further than this. So he says, the proud, those who have constantly used their matak weapons or the instruments of digging and putting the seed, Zed one, the proud ones, they have digged and kept for you the pits. Do you know what is the pit? The word says over here for us in the Hebrew, for pit called to be shika. And the word shika meant to say, as we find, like a ditch, or you can be making known to say, the way how you have been sinking down to humble and you are sinking down to such a state called to be depression of the mind. That's the origin called to be shwak. So, why and how we are going to become depressed in your mind? Why and how we are going to sink down and you think your sinking down is the sign of humbleness and you have now depression in your mind? The reason is very, very simple because they have made the thinking process of your mind to have fortified from the Word of God that is separated from the Word of God and they constantly make you to look upon the wall of fortification what they have made in their life and say this is the reality. So when you believe that, what you happen, you go to the humbleness state and that goes to sink down in your brain and you become depression of your mind. If you do not know the power where the word of Lord God says several times in Isaiah 54 in verse 10 or Isaiah 41 in verse 30 or again in 40 verse 20, in 40 chapter verse 30, you will be renewed. Again, if you come back to Psalms 92, verses 13 through 15, being planted in the house of the Lord of a God, you shall flourish. And even though you are old, you will be bearing fruit. Again, we read the same thing in Psalms 144, verses 13 through 15. Daughters are like a cornerstone. Your herds will not fail. There will be not a sign of crying in your home. Again, he says for you, Happy are the people, Asherias, the one who walk according to the great and unique standards of the mind of Christ. Such are the people who are walking according to grow up as scribes. They will be the great ones being called in the presence of the people because their God is Jehovah Elohim. So all of these things, when we look and when we consider and we have them to be our proof, these people, they come and they dig a pit and keep you there so that you can have that in your mind and you say you are old enough now and you are not ready to complete the battles of the Lord and the rest of your time you would just let go thinking that there is no great power in my flesh in doing the will of God and you go to die. So you sink down that information in your mind. That sinking down of information will lead you to the depression of mind. And who are these people? The word says, they have digged pits for me, which not after thy law, which are not according to thy word. These people did not know the word of the Lord of a God and that they have put in your brain, in your mind to be depressed by making you to believe lies rather than every day asking you to carry your cross and follow my Christ and do the will of God the Father. Because in Deuteronomy chapter 8 verses 2 through 4 we find though their feet were calloused, Though their garments waxed old, referring to the flesh and to the legs, particularly you have some holes or some sign of callousness in your legs, you cannot walk. So he says, in spite of that, they came to collect every day the word of God. That is that time existing manna for them, the food of the angels. But today we have the same manna for us. But since we are not collecting the word of the Lord of God, because you have all the reasons to talk about, it's because they have put and kept in you the digging pits. 
They have put you somewhere wherewith you are not able to overcome from those spirits. In order to overcome those spirits, you should look as the word says in John 8, 32, you shall know the doctrine and the doctrine shall set you free. Because Christ our Lord our God is the truth. We should be so much thankful to our Lord our God in giving us this completed can of scripture preserved and kept in the 66 books. Because every word of the Lord our God is so unique, infallible and ignorant. It really changes the vigor and valor of man to have in him the power of Lord God the Holy Ghost indwelling in him. When he walks in truth in achieving the will of God the Father in making disciples of all the nations. When David wished the three men break through into the camp of the Philistines and they bought him the water. In Exodus chapter 14, Lord God is saying to Moses, what for your crying? Take the authority given in your hand, go forward. Today people have been crying out from the man made arrogant digged in self pits and they're not really interested to look the power of the mind of Christ when Lord God be with us who can be against us you are more than conqueror in each and everything what God the Father has designed us he said in Romans 8 yet we are not able to believe it and go ahead and achieve the works of Christ and to whom you're fearing, you're fearing among the heathen. The people who know not my Christ, the people who know not the power of the word of the Lord of a God, which is so great and unique. You're fearing such men. And because you're fearing such men, you're failing to get into taking your word. No matter whatever it is, the word of the Lord of a God says, if he has designed right from the beginning of the first man, Adam, Every day in the cool of the breeze he is coming and teaching them the word of the Lord of a God. Today we also have the same procedure to continue. If not, when we read from Jeremiah 26, he says, The house shall become like Shiloha. The people will come back and they would say, How could you curse? How could the things be happen? But the Lord God says, such it is, such it is. Do not change or do not have your pressure to change your words. When the Bible says for you to daily assemble, teach them the same importance of daily assembling in the word of the Lord of a God. No matter whether the feet is calloused or the garments are waxed old, as they would die hunger if they don't come and take that day the particular food, they are not able to understand the inner man, how much it has been dying hunger without knowing the right word of the Lord of a God. And above all, all under the clutches of this hedonistic way of thinking or the human viewpoint way of thinking or cosmic way of thinking where Satan is constantly trying you not to know the truth so that the truth alone can set you free and when you have been set free you know very well you are going to trample Satan under your feet and the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in this world and you simply march ahead in achieving the things of Christ. And that's the problem today. The stumbling blocks which have been put for them by their own ignorance and not cognizance but ignorance to learn the mind of Christ. They are not cognizant in knowing the mind of Christ. They are ignorant. That's the problem. If they would be alert in knowing the mind of Christ, they would know very well how to protect their vessels sanctified to learn the will of God the Father and to make known every breath what they take. It has to be purely for the glory of God the Father for which cause they have been kept alive on this earth. They would have known how to possess their vessels to be sanctified. They would have kept the chastity of this health. You know, the things the people, they think they get sickness because of the hereditary, because of this, because of this standards, what the world has built in up in saying, if you are diabetic, this is the range. If you are having some blood pleasure, this is the age or this is the range, what you need to have. So in all of these things, they put a mark <coughs> 
And the Bible calls, they do not know, the people who do not know the mind of Christ, they have already digged and kept for you the pits. That means, your munching process is completely dependent upon that wall of fortification of these people, what they have built. And constantly they are bombarding you. You know how they bombard? They are bombarding you, for example, if you are watching your TV or anything about, according to your TV, you get advertisements. Isn't it enough once if you put the advertisements in a day? The person goes on to repeat that advertisement after every half an hour of the program. For example, if you are watch, watching a movie, you may have one break movie, but certain times you can find if the movie is very hot and in the sense which is of a successful one, they would say for every 15 minutes we shall put a break, commercial break. And there they are going to bombard you with the advertisements. Some would say, a woman has reached the age of 30, so her bone density is gone. Why he wants to promote his product? And some would say, all the details pertaining to this life, from top of the head till to the top of the feet, he wants to promote you in all the things, so that he should get his product sale. So these are advertisements, what you find there. And what the advertisements are giving in your mind, they have been brushing out to understand that if you don't take this product from the age of 30, your bone density is gone. And then you try to think on that. And that when it is sinking down in your brain, it leads to depression of mind. And automatically, the people who do not know the power and the strength of the word of the Lord of a God, they have been proud, arrogant enough to dig and keep you such pits. And you are in return honoring them. You know why? Because you don't know the word of God. If you know the mind of Christ, if you know the reality and the truth, you would just say, these are alibis, these are man-made pits, these are the people who have come for their own selfish thoughts and they're going to make this work of God to be halted by making your brain to be depressed and not to rely upon the power of the mind of Christ. If anyone would be there in the standard of this Exodus chapter 14 when they're crossing the river of the Red Sea, they would say, how it's possible for them. But Lord God says, I've given you the authority. Go ahead. Go forward. Don't wait. Go forward. And they walked on the dry land. And when the sea has been divided asunder, we have such kind of a great Lord of a God, which is impossible for a man even to think he can ever make such an engineering to see that the sea could be divided apart and man can walk upon the dry land. It's not possible for a man to think because the deeds of our Lord of a God are so great and so unique. And we have such kind of a great Lord of a God for us who maketh us to walk in the dry land in the midst of such pressure. And such kind of a great ability he has given unto us in making the same thing achieving now in the present Christendom though it's a terms of apostasy for us. Though there are people who are not dividing the word of the Lord of our God accurately, though they are not making day by day the great work of my Christ in making disciples of all the nations, in sending them when they are grown up into grammatias, yet when we come with the Lord, we shall walk valiantly and we shall be valiant for the truth and make the works of my Lord to be number one in this life. But since you haven't been in the will of God to know what is that exactly the work of God, you are losing lot many great things in Christ. The same thing what we can look in, Deuteron in Daniel chapter 2 in verse 11. He said, when these magicians or the Chaldeans or the astrologers, the soothsayers, they came back and they said, if there is a God whose dwelling is not in the flesh, then he alone can reveal you this dream. And the anger of the king 
was more, and he sent a decree saying that all these wise men should be perished. And here we learn that it men it is impossible, but with Lord God all things are possible. When we have such kind of a great Lord of a God, when we learn through that lesson of Daniel 2, how much more you think God the Father can make you all to overcome from such arrogant pits being digged and kept by such unfaithful men, though they might be in their sincerity trying to make known to the world the fatigueness of the human body. But why we call them unfaithful? The word of the Lord our God says for us in Deuteronomy 28, Leviticus 26, even Exodus 15, 26 and 27. If you shamma, shamma, listen diligently the mind of Christ rather than rebelling grievously to the mind of Christ. Shamma, shamma, in contrast to Mara, Mara. Shamma Shamma diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord of a God, Mara Mara grievously rebelling against the voice of the Lord. Instead of Mara Mara, if we would be Shamma Shamma in doing the will of God the Father, he said, None of the sicknesses shall come upon thee. But now the man is trying to research many more things so that even he can find out the resurrection through cloning or cryonics or XYZ, this genome technology or biotechnology. And he's sinning a lot. Do you know why? Because man doesn't know the origin of sickness is because when he has rebelled against the Lord. The source of all sickness is your rebellion against my Christ. Believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. If that's the key for you, you don't believe in the Lord because already you have been blinded by such digging pits of Satan. Volume 2, page number 100, talking about the Satanology. The great man Lewis Perry Chaffer writes, What all the cosmic thinking of Satan has been inculcated there. And today, whatever you think apart from the word of the Lord of a God, if you don't get every thought into captivity for Christ, if you're not making to realize that if you open up our mind or if you make any entrance into our mind, any thought, any origin of the thought or any reason of the thought or any action of the thought, it has to be completely based upon the proper exegetical word, much more specific to be based upon the pictographical representation of the words which they have been given in this ancient Hebrew language. It has to come back from the word of the Lord of a God. It has to teach you up from the word of the Lord of a God. And your thoughts has to originate from the Bible if you're not thinking according to the mind of Christ. You cannot believe the unbelieving things like dividing asunder of the sea. Or the king, what he demanded, the people, they say, whose dwelling is not in the flesh, if such kind of a God is there, then he alone can reveal to you all the thing that is gone out of your mind. And for them, there is not such a God, but we know very well the creator who made man, who put into him the breath of his nostrils and who made the flesh to go in there. That's what we read from the book of Isaiah 42. And for that cause, he says in Isaiah 42, verse 4, he will not fail, he will not get discouraged because he wants all men to be saved because the coastlands are waiting for the manifestation of the adult sons. For that cause, he has given us this bona fide work of the Spirit, constantly reminding you to walk in order, to put the things in order, to place the things in order. And marching ahead in the will of God, but you're having a stumbling blocks being digged and kept by these arrogant men who do not know the original language of the scriptures in the church. Neither they are teaching you to understand the importance of your life in this life, which is given for us in the church age, the only great and unique age, what we have for us. Under the great player of Baltimore privilege privileges given to any mankind ever on this earth, apart from this church age, being indwelled by Lord God, the Holy Ghost, 
given to us such kind of a great life, given to us such kind of a great mentoring power. And yet, what are we doing today? Do you think I really qualified to do the will of God? Are we really doing the will of Christ? Dear brother, until and unless you come to know and learn the mind of Christ, until and unless you come back with a great zeal and thirst and desire to know the will of God, the Father, what He has designed and kept for us in eternity past, until and unless you come back and do it, and until and unless you come back and learn it, really you're not going to achieve to come out from the digged pits of this arrogant man. The men, they want to look solutions from a God whose dwelling is not in the spirit or in the flesh. But now that same God dwells in us, in the flesh. He has given us his completed canon to reveal us the word. No further teachings of the prophets or the apostles so that we could add something to this canon. But he has given us the completed canon of scripture, 66 books. Now it's our bona fide duty in diligently searching word by word, line by line, precept upon precept, iota upon iota, and carrera upon carrera, with proper exegetical standards of the word, with isagogics and categories of the truth. And build up your inner mind to be strengthened by the Spirit in you. So that we could be learning the mystery of Christ. That which was hidden in the past but now made known to us through the church. And through the church the manifold wisdom of God what they have to teach to these fallen angels. But you are stuck up in your own arrogant, man-made pits. The word they have digged. Shuak, the origin of the word. It says that this people they have taken up to sink in your mind the thinking of the world. That's the word pit. And what it is going to be? It is going to be sinking down and leads you in the field stem, the depression of your mind. And today, dear brethren, do you think you have any worry in your life? Lord of God said, first seek my righteousness and my kingdom, then all these things will be added unto you. And today, the people are happy to get destroyed from the plots being kept by such men, rather than making to overcome such proud and arrogant ones. In the isagogical background, it says the proud is a metaphor which has been taken from the mode in which wild beasts are caught in the east. Deep pits are dung, dug in the earth and slightly covered over the reeds of the turf so as not to be discerned from the solid ground. And the animals attempting to walk over them, the surface breaks. They fall in and are taken alive. Today, much of the people also who have this bitter experience in life, they would say, even you can find one of the great doctors in our country by name B.M. Hegde. In his talks, he says, once you go for a scanning and you come out, before going to scanning, you're well, but when you go for scanning and you come out, they attach to you all numerous types of sicknesses. That's true. Not that your body is old or the things pertaining to your body, you're right. It's like a pit, what they have designed to make the medical mafia to run around. And the same thing they put, the same thing they employ. So dear brethren, he says for us, let the proud be ashamed. They have dealt perversely with me. The word perversely is called to be crooked. The Hebrew word avat. 
without a cause, but I will meditate upon thy precepts. The same verse chapter with verse number 78, it teaches to us, let the proud be ashamed. The word ashamed is called to be, to act shamefully, because they have dealt perversely, crooked with me, and what? Without a cause. Who is the planner behind that? Satan. Why? Because he doesn't want you to know the word. And the word over here, what we find, without a cause, that doesn't meant to say just simply a cause, or without having any reason. The Hebrew word is sheker. Sheker meant to say lie, deception, falsehood. And here they have come up fraudulently to deal with you in false standards. But he says, no matter whatever they might deal with me crookedly or deal with me deception, deal with me fraudulent way, they will be ashamed. You know why? Because I will meditate upon thy precepts. The word precepts is called to be pakud. And that pakud meant to say for us that which we need to attain or that which we need to number and take. These are the statutes of the Lord of a God, what he has given for us. And there, how you have to have these precepts, these are like your overseers, the one who are in charge. So are you meditating upon the one who is in charge for you? That's the reason, he says. The word siak meant to say, I have been completely meditating upon the one who is my overseer. And who could be the overseer for a believer on this earth? It's Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And how he could be now? Through the mind of Christ, the word of the Lord of a God given to you in the completed canon of scripture. Looking upon the standards of the present Christendom, if we would go back and look them when they die and come to the heaven, much of the things what have been lost is purely because you haven't searched diligently the mind of Christ. You haven't thought upon the word of the Lord of a God diligently as it ought to be in the word of the Lord. You haven't meditated upon the one who is your in charge, the one who is your overseer. But here he says, the proud they have dealt with me arrogantly. Let them be ashamed without a cause. They have kept for me deception pits. They have come, he says, Shekhar, and they have dwelt crooked. The word perverse meant to say crooked, awat. And then they have come without a cause, shakir, deception. I will meditate. The word but is not found in the original, it's in italics. The strong reason, I will meditate, that has to be your attitude today. I will meditate. And that's what really a brethren, he says, in several of the passages of this book of Psalms, saying that the pride have digged for my soul, but Lord God is the one who protects me. In Proverbs 16.27 he says, An ungodly man diggeth up evil, and in his lips there is a burning fire, who they are ungodly men. And he says in Jeremiah 18.20, Shall evil be recompensed for good, for they have digged a pit for my soul. And then he says, Remember that I have stood before thee to speak good for them and to turn away thy wrath from them. <laughs> That's what happens to the pastor teachers as well. We don't worry whether they are people who are trying to dig pits because we know very well they do not know the word of the Lord. So he says for us, In the righteousness of the Lord of a God, we do his work and is always there for us to protect. But how much more these people who have these great standards in the word of the Lord and they would do it and consider such great life in Christ to be the number one priority. So dear brother, we need to look very carefully if the proud have been digging, why is it that we need to worry? If the proud have been there without knowing the word of the Lord of a God, why is it that we need to worry?
because we have with us the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They have been dealing with us without knowing the law. But what do we have? We have for us the truth. We have for us the mind of Christ. So we need not worry about the people, but rather we are here to understand the will of God the Father which has been given for us. And yet what happens today in our pulpits? There are men who are coming now to look, to behave proudly, to behave arrogantly. Because they are not knowing the importance of the original languages of the scriptures. And since they haven't known the original languages of the scriptures, they try to come. And they are digging in return for you their own pits along with you. So he says in this verse number 78, let the proud be ashamed. And who are the people who are proud? The one who are arrogant ones. Though we repeatedly ask them to learn the word of God, though we repeatedly ask them to know the mind of Christ, though we repeatedly tell them, go back and dig and learn the mind of Christ. Know the original language of the scriptures. Study to show thyself a prudent to God. Do not waste your valuable grace. Though we have been given such kind of a great life in the Lord, do not waste it. But they say arrogantly, who is having time to dig the word in the original languages? Who is having time to go and teach line by line, precept upon precept, word by word, or iota upon iota and carrera upon carrera and tell the truth? Who is having the time? That's what these people they talk about. Who is having the time for us? Or where is the time for us? And yet much of the present Christendom has been heeding to these arrogant ones. And they're not marching ahead. Do you think they are really marching ahead in doing the will of God? They are breaking through. Though we have such kind of an impossible Lord God with us, they have been stuck up in their digging pits. And constantly the present Christendom pastors are also bombarding you with the oratory style, with the eloquent speeches, emphasizing to you miracles or healings, and not emphasizing the real thing, what the word of Lord God has given to us to be the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath. They aren't doing that every day. Neither they are interested in performing it every day. Because they want the people to hear what the itching ears can lead them or talk to them. And apart from that, they don't have any other work for them to do. Only the itching ears what it wants to tell. Or desiring ears what they want to tell. They will just talk to you the silly stupid things. But the spirit of the Lord God which he has given unto us. The thinking of the mind of Christ which has given unto us. He says very clearly, you shall not fail, you shall not be discouraged. The peace of God which has been given to us so that we have every day the peace from God. By making Lord God to be happy, not to be discouraged, not to fail Him. So that you could be equipped to go back and do the will of God and perform the will of Christ. It's a great work what you have. Such kind of a great work what we have in the church age. And yet the people, they are not able to go back and to lighten the Gentiles, though the light has been shining. They are still stuck up in the digged pits of these arrogant ones. It's a shame for us. Though much is given and much has been expected from us. The people who are stuck up in such arrogant way of life. In such arrogant way of thinking. So the only solution to overcome from such arrogant way of life or arrogant way of thinking. Doctrine says, I will meditate in thy precepts. Or in thy overseer standards what I have given unto us. We shall meditate upon such precepts. 
the mouth wherewith you have given them to be the mouth of the Lord. When he says in Ezekiel chapter 3, the prophets, the one whom I have sent, they are my mouth. The Lord saith, so from the mouth, from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun, whatever the thought of perception it is, he says that these are the people who will be given to talk about and to meditate about and they will teach to you the truth so that you could be absolutely learning the commandments from the direction for the great purpose of producing the work you have been given this great overseer. So what does this overseer do? The first thing he will watch over. He will look and consider the things. He will look upon up to what standards your thinking are. And then he is going to direct. To give you what is the right word of God. He is going to teach to you the importance of the mind of Christ. And then he is going to command the work of our overseer, what we are talking about, this Pikud command. And then he is going to chastise you if needed. When you are not following the command, when you are not following the direction, when you are not taking the watch over work. He says he is going to command. He's going to chastise, he's going to review, and he's going to count those in this overseer work, those who have been occupied in Christ for the will and the work of the Lord. He says that for the purpose of producing the work of the Lord, he is going to closely inspect you. Do you think we have any other work as an overseer when you go to the commandments of the Lord of our God to be taught from the mouth of the Lord of our God given to us to talk in the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher? But today there aren't enough men who are talking about the commandments of my Christ. There are no proper commandments of the Lord being taught from the mouth of this man who have been given this bona fide gift. Because they don't have this bona fide gift. If they have this bona fide gift, they know what is the burden of the Lord. When we read that word in Ezekiel chapter 3, particularly in verse 11, when he said, go, the word go is nothing but, if the pastor teacher has been sent, he is going to come to make these disciples, or been, who has been as disciples, John 1 to 12. To see that they are compulsorily growing up into scribes. That's a very simple sign. Lord God sends the pastor teachers to say that these scribes or these uh, disciples should be growing up into scribes. That's the only reason why he's going to send. If not, there is no need for him to send. And today we are lacking that in our pulpits. Today, there aren't enough men to understand this great principle in Christ, that they have been sent. If ever they have been sent, they have been sent in doing the will of God, in doing the work of God. But do you think they are doing it? Then you should ask yourself, how many days more you will be into that proud, arrogant, digged pits of man? And that's how Satan deals, still to blind your eyes. He doesn't want you to realize, to meditate upon the overseer to whom you have been given in charge so that he is teaching you the right word of God and you should learn from him. And even the people who have come, they have come for some handful of barley or for some pieces of bread, talking to be inculcated according to the standards of men and not according to the standards of the truth of Christ. And they come and they talk many more things. And the people are just happy listening to them. Weekly ones coming to the church. You are running a show. A show which is not even worthwhile to talk about. Because you are still sinking down in the depression of your mind. 
Though we have been given such kind of a great word of the Lord our God in our hands to protect it, to handle it accurately, to know your life, to reshape your future. By completely meditating upon the precepts. Because he says repeatedly, they had dealt with me in Shekhar way, in perverse methods, they have dwelt. But I meditate upon thy precepts. In order to get out of that pit which has been digged and kept, in order to come out of that pit which has been there for you, you need to meditate upon the precepts of the word of the Lord. When once you are coming out of that pit, Satan thinks how difficult it was for me to put into that pit, as we read that, in the isological background of this, in the east, the way how they put along these pits. It says in this Psalms 119 in verse 85 or 86, what we're reading over here. In the isological background of this subject, it says that in the east, the beasts, the way how they used to take hold of. So, it is like a metaphor wherewith the deep pits are dug in the earth and slightly covered over with reeds so as not to be discerned from the solid ground. Now the animals are attempting to walk over them. The surface breaks, they fall in and are taken alive. The same thing over here what we learn. Even your lives have been caught alive like that by Satan. And it's very happy to put you there. No matter whatever difficulty you may have, you will be thinking that you will be in the same pit. Because you are getting from Satan all mannerism of lies or shaker or deception to be believed. Do you think do you have something greater than that? When coming to the word of the Lord of our God, weekly ones, even though you are coming weekly ones to the church, you have all the reasons to say not to get out of that pit. Because you get only weekly ones, the rest, so you want to spend your time with your life, that is what, whatever may be associated with that, your wife, your children, or your drunkenness, or your weekends, what you celebrate. So you have all these reasons to talk. And you say, at least I get only one day, why I need to go to that overseer, or the pastor in charge is going to preach, is going to tell you your faults, is going to ask you to correct your old evil paths and get back to the right path of the Lord. So you think in the energy of your flesh you're able to protect your life on this earth for 60, 70, 80 years and then you're going to die. So you led a good life, but you know what? You're going to end up in hell. The 60, 70 years, what you thought you could give great refreshment to this flesh, entertainment to this flesh, enthusiasm to this flesh. You may thought attending the church weekly once like an attendance and not being edified in the word of the Lord, not learning the mind of Christ, not growing up in the will of God. And you thought you are coming weekly once to the church. And you have two great questions given by the Lord of our God in Matthew 7, 21 through 25. Particularly those who do not do the will of God the Father. He says, I never knew you, workers of iniquity, depart from me. The same thing again in Luke chapter 13. You may say, Lord, in your presence we ate and drank. We heard your word in your streets. He says, I never knew you. Get out. So you should realize this 60, 70 or 80 years of your life which are going to die anyhow because that's the passage for sinners. Those who don't do the will of God, they're going to die within the age of 40. But the people who are dying, who are doing the will of God, the Father, they're going to go about minimum three times the age of my Christ, what he lived on this earth. That's what we read between Enoch and Methuselah. So you have now the same life over here for you in the Lord. And you have to continue that. 
so but you're going to die within the age of 80 and this 80 years what you have enjoyed on this earth being in the pits digged and kept by satan or the arrogant man the proud man you know what will be the fate eternal condemnation Though you may say, I believed in the Lord. You haven't done the will of God the Father. Believing Lord, you have been dead to the world as Isa is thinking now. Anyhow he's going to die. What is the worth of this birthright? So shall be your life. Anyhow you are going to die. So what is the birthright that I carry? So let me eat that lentil and that pottage. In the same manner now, you should say, anyhow I am going to die to the world. What is the point of me wasting my time in search of this vanity of vanities, though summarized and kept by Solomon and teaching to us his entire life, that he says it went upon vanity of vanities. Again, you want to repeat the experiment. Better for us, the fear of the Lord of a God is the beginning of wisdom. While you are in youth, carry the burden of the Lord of a God. Make sure your seat has been reserved in the heaven. And walk worthy of your calling, wherewith Lord God the Father has called every believer in the Lord. Walk worthy of such high, holy, heavenly calling, wherewith you shall not blaspheme the great name of my Christ given to you. Dear brethren, wake up. Don't waste your valuable grace, valuable time. You have been given something great and unique that you will never realize or understand until and unless if you are coming out or not able to come out from that pit. And that pit causes you to believe the truths of these lies. Because it is a lie, it is not a truth. If our Lord our God said, none of the sicknesses shall come upon you, what he has given, it's better for us to make ourselves related right with Christ. Sincerely, many noble awards might be given to many men who have achieved being a scientist, or being a richest, or be, being a researcher one, or being a radiologist one, or anyone, whatever in the field of this human anatomy they might have done, they might have rewarded with such and such great things. But if they would have done 1% of the research in the Bible and if they have said the reason for your health sickness is because you are not believing in Christ and not obeying the mandates of the Lord, make straight your paths with the Lord our God so that he can strengthen your weakened knees and he can make your hands to be strengthened which have been feebled out. What a great impact men would have been in the fear of the Lord our God. So you get lot many problems. What are you doing now? You go in search of lies and you go in search of your solutions. And those solutions you think they are from God. God directed you to a good doctor. God directed you to this. No. God will always direct you to meditate upon the precepts of the word of the Lord of a God. He says for you to come back. Look what is your fault. Where have you failed? Learn and understand the mind of Christ. But we are proud and arrogant. We don't want to come out from the dig good pit. The sooner the better you come out from those dig good pits and serve my Christ. If you are not coming out, Dear brother, you are going to die before the time what God the Father has designed for every believer to be on this earth, shining as a light luminaries and telling forth to the world that Jehovah is upright. That's what we read in Psalms 90 to 15. Why we shall be planted in the house of the Lord, why we shall flourish in the, th in the kingdom of my God to make known to this world that Jehovah is upright and in him there is no unrighteousness at all. There is no reason or excuse to have any unrighteousness in the Lord. For that very simple reason, God the Father keeps you alive. To show forth, the word to show is Nagad, 
if you don't show forth then who is going to tell that's the word nagad it's what you your life has to tell about you and that too you have to prove your whole way is ya share of pride but i think much of the christendom or many of the believers today who are called to be professing nominal conventional christians or denominational standards christians can never prove this verse in their entire life because they will never come out from the proud arrogant digged pits and they want to have that proud arrogant digged pits to be the only way of life on this earth they think that's the lie and they will never go forward they will never break up and go ahead but when the difficulties they come they come and call a pastor teacher to pray on behalf of them and what else a pastor teacher can pray for them by diminishing a word saying that lord i have received from them so much of money as a gift so lord you kindly forgive their sins is that's the way you're going to pray so that they have given me some bribe lord so that even now i can have some things for me as well because of the gift of them you're diminishing the word of the lord you know what you have to tell them come to the church and learn every day the mind of christ If you're not coming to the church, if you're not learning every day the mind of Christ, forget it. Because Lord God said even to Samuel and to Moses, even though they pray, I will not hear. Don't pray for this people. They are hard-hearted, rebellion core men. They will never come back to do the will of God, to do the mind of Christ. They are worthless people. So we find over here in Micah chapter three verse four, then they shall cry unto the Lord, but He will not hear them. Excuse me. But He will not hear them. He will even hide His face from them at that time, as they have behaved themselves ill. in their doings do you know the word what is ill the hebrew word is ra'a meant to say displeasing evil they have done injurious to lord god the holy ghost in dwelling in them they have done wickedly they have done mischief and that's what the word says ra'a but the word of lord god in the pictographical representation it says their thinking is distorted their thinking is corrupted their thinking is not the right mind of christ we can call today the church age the same raa thinking distorted thinking evil thinking and the word distorted meant to say something which is absolutely not functioning properly and it's not functioning properly at all the pastor teacher is not in charge to do the will of god the congregational believers they are happy to say weekly ones or something of the church is enough why and what else we need to be over here for the church for the next few days again we'll come back in the next week but dear brethren he calls them the way you have behaved ill and how you are going to behave ill because you are already stuck up in that proud arrogant digged pits 
your munching process has been on the exact standards of the wall being fortified and they call this is your thinking this is your limit so you cannot go further than that and you think and you live your life according to that standards and you forgot to look what is the true life in Christ though Christ Jesus our Lord our God walked in the midst of us and taught us that we have to do only the will of God the Father and we have to be the people where God the Father could recognize and say well and faithful stewards you have done my work but we have just missed out the pattern and the model what Christ Jesus our Lord our God set forth for us when Paul says I follow him you imitate me even in Philippians 3 17 it stands recorded mark them well who are walking according to this rule but how many of them are really walking according to this scribal authority rule the rule wherewith you can come back and learn the mind of the Lord the rule wherewith you can be absolutely saying and teaching to the people the life what Christ Jesus our Lord our God has designed is something great and unique it's not like the exact patterns as the world goes on in its thinking. The thinking pattern what Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has given to us is something great and unique. And do you think are you following it? No dear brethren, we are not following it. You can ask this question to yourself, are we still in the same dig good pits? Because you are behaving ill. And that's why when you cry out unto the Lord our God to be delivering you out from the details of life, from the slavery of your sickness, you're not able to understand that. Because it is evil to the core for you. You're not able to realize that it is evil. So he says, then shall they cry unto the Lord, but he will not hear them. The word hearing is that he has turned away his absolute reply. Because your distorted thinking, twisted thinking is the reason. And if ever you ask what is the vigor and valor of the Lord of a God so that he is not listening to us, he says, because it is distorted. So he will not hear when you cry out. So in order to hear, first clear out your distorted thinking. The same thing he says in the book of Proverbs. Lord God will not listen to the prayers of them, those who don't hear to the law of the Lord of God. But these people, they think they are really doing great things to Christ. But the word of Lord God teaches. He is not going to hear your prayers if you are not listening to his law. In Proverbs 28 you find that. So, he will not hear them, but he will even hide his face. You know why he's going to hide his face? He wants to now test you to get that process of persecution or pain. And then when you come to the reality of the word of the Lord of a God in answering back and saying that, Lord, in me, if you test and prove, now I have the sign of authority of yours. I haven't been with my lips, but with true of my heart, with a broken heart, with a contrite spirit, trembling at your word, O Lord. And when you come with such a repentance to the Lord of a God, is going to place a mark upon you. A mark after your suffering. So that now you could prove that you are really belonging to God. And that things, he is going to open up his head and to look and listen upon you. Till that time he will hide. So the process you have to go, number one, for you, the thorn process, the pressure process. After the pressure process, you're going to build up the great process of having the sign of a cross, meant to say the sign of authority. And after that, you're going to have in the thinking of the Lord a place. Till that time he's going to hide his face. And then, after hiding his face, 
from them at that time, he says, because he is not going to open up his mouth. Because of the way the people that have kept their eyes upon the authority of this proud, arrogant, decayed page. So as long as you're keeping your eyes upon this proud, arrogant, digged pitch way of life, it is Christ our Lord of a God who is not going to listen to you. He's not going to do reply for you because of your distorted thinking. And that distorted thinking has become for you your life. And that's what it has become for you to be your yoke. So, you are experiencing the staff of yoke. The yoke which has been attached to the oxen for performing work. And how many days more you want to be not heard by the Lord because of the ill of your doings. And you may ask, what is that ill of the doings we are doing now? not getting out of the digged pits by the proud man. How to get out of the digged pits of the proud man? Meditate upon the precepts of the mind of Christ. And if you are not meditating upon the precepts of the mind of Christ, you are still doing your ill behavior way of life in the presence of God. So God the Father is not going to hear you. And no matter how much you may try that you want to do the will of God, you want to do the work of God, you want to fulfill the great commission of my Christ. It's not possible, dear brother. Though the world may cause you to learn and say you have done lot many research, you have done lot many great things to the mankind of man, you have still damaged the fear of the Lord. If this great man would come and teach to us, get back your things straight with the Lord of a God first, then you will have really a great time in this life. It would have been a great research by this man, because they think it's pure religion to support Christianity. But it's Christianity which is bearing all the silly, stupid logics of these people. Because you know you have the truth. And yet to win them by the truth, there aren't enough men being well trained to be wise unto salvation. The purpose of all scripture being given into your hands, so that the man of man might be mature and thoroughly furnished unto all good works is not being trained today in our pulpits. If they would turn away from the evil of the doings, what a great effect they would have in Christ. But do you think they are turning away? They will come out from the pits. You can easily come out from such pits. Provided you know what is the trap being set by Satan. And as we read further in Psalms 119, verse 96 to 98, greater wisdom than my enemies I have, he says, only through the precepts. To know the traps, how they have been set, to be aware about your spiritual life, to live a life that which is absolutely glorifying to God the Father, being edified in the word of the Lord. To have more wisdom than your enemies, to be free from such traps. God the Father says and teaches to us, His word is the only key. For that cause He says, Be wise as serpent. And harmless as dove. So that you could be in this devil world, but yet you have to come back to understand how to gain your life in the Lord. How to perform the things in the Lord. But if you are still kept as a snare or a trap under that digged 
proud digged pit and this proud digged pit who they are they do not know the law he says they do not know the word of god he says how much more they should reign the children of this world can be wiser than the children of the word of god no way dear brother they cannot be those who do not know the law if they have digged and kept such kind of a pits for us then those who know the law of the word of the lord of our god how much more accurate they have to be in escaping from such snares or traps being digged and kept and yet dear brethren if you don't come back to learn the word of the lord of our god you are not coming out from such pits and therefore this heathen rage the reason is because we believers in christ haven't known the truth you haven't led the life that which could be worthy to the lord of a god in saying to live for me is christ and to die is profitable you haven't lived such life yet to the lord and that you love to look your time upon this earth being passed by as you say from childhood to manhood and there to adulthood and from there to your old age you're passing by your times but this short span of time in the presence of god the father what are investing on this earth to come out as early as possible from such proud arrogant pits been digged by men and to completely walk in the fellowship of lord god the holy ghost is a wise man who has known that the end of all perfection may be great but about them the commandments of the lord of a god are exceedingly broad the people may think this is the perfection this is the perfection but the mind of christ teaches to us his commandments are exceedingly broad and yet, dear brother and how many days more you want to be still in the digged pits and not to learn the commandments of the lord of a god which are exceedingly broad than the spits of man but god the father has given us the exercise of authority what satan thought it can give to christ in the days of the 40 days of fasting but at lord and savior jesus christ gave that same exercise of authority for his wife the church and the believers the men so that we could go and make everyone on this earth to be the disciple of the lord and to win them back to the lord because that's his will not to perish but everyone should come to the thorough knowledge of his glory epinosis knowledge of his word and that there will be men who will not believe in christ but at lord god the father gives us this great pleasure to enjoy this life in the power of lord god the holy spirit when you are out free from the digged pits of the proud ones and by making known to this people what is the right and true importance of this life to prove that jehovah elohim is a pride when he has absolutely cleansed us out by giving in us a new heart a new spirit and strengthening us only to the will of his glory what a great privilege we have to understand about this things those who come back and learn it every day they have this privilege but those who don't love my lord they still become traps they are still under the clutches of satan because they don't come to love to know the truth because the truth alone can set them free what a beautiful word we have for us on this earth at the people who are rejecting that word and trying to build up a life upon 
adopted tempered mortars. Dear brethren, think over these issues. Since life is too short, at the responsibility laid down upon our shoulders is too large. We have a lot many things to learn because we cannot diminish the word of the Lord of God. We have a lot many things to come back and learn and understand and to apply this life only to the glory of my Christ. And we cannot be the same still, wasting our time in worthless, useless things. Because when once you have known this proud man have digged and kept the pits, it's the highest beauty and privilege for us to know the Creator and to learn from Him by meditating upon His precepts to be far away from the pits and to enjoy the love of God. Dear brother, and think over these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His grace. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing movements being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In the order of the Lord, the Father, the Father, the Father, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Savior, that's the moment itself. You shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us is very simple. Believe in Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest mind is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Wherewith you shall learn to acquire the possession of the truth and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, the greatest mind is to carry so thon lagan. Herald the word in season, out of season, because the diamond from my witnesses where you have been called. The number one diamond from my witnesses in wearing Trinity, follow the Bible in our hands. The number two diamond from my witnesses are hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, and not worry besides nature, the entire injury cost will be witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter how over the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide as we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His grace. Infinitely divine Holy Father, what a great and unique privilege it is, O Lord, to learn your mind upon Psalms 119 verse 85. That proud and arrogant men have digged and kept the pits. But the word alone can set us free because that's the only truth on this life to this man can ever given. After believing in Christ and the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Ghost to know it and to learn it and to apply it. And to sell off the birthright of this life to the world and to win your birthright in the heaven. To be alive to Christ and to be dead to the world. Father, have simple logic. It is a lot to be constantly in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in being trained in your will and to overcome the pits so that not to be trapped by meditating upon your precepts, by meditating upon your overseer commands of the life and to be constantly in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to go forward and to do your will by breaking all the commandments of the men which they have preserved themselves but making up this true life, the new life in Christ, to be always in your glory. So, Father, help us to meditate upon the word every day for the purpose of which you have kept us alive. And make, help us to make known thy word accurately as much as we can in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, for thy glory. In Christ's matchless, pure, gracious name we pray, Father, may Lord God, the Holy Ghost, enlighten and challenge about this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord.